The opinions expressed in this show are the views of the host and not necessarily that of WTRW, 94.3 The Talker, or the Bold Gold Media Group. The following presentation is brought to you by the host of the program who is solely responsible for its content. Good afternoon. Welcome to Make a Change. I'm your host, Terry Martin, along with my producer, D.C. Taylor. The show is all about you and how to make a change, and... Today is my first time to work with DC. Yes, pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure for me also. So DC, today we're going to talk about your skin secrets. Now I don't mean yours in particular, but anyone listening. And how we can be our own very best detectives. Okay. I always ask the question, can skin care possibly save your life? Now I'm not only talking about skin care products here, I'm talking about awareness. Knowing that our skin is the largest organ of our body, maybe it's one of the most important organs we should be paying more attention to. That's why I am in the skincare business. I find it fascinating. You know, it's crazy when you think how your skin truly is a mirror of your insides. And it's a pretty good indicator of what's going on. So just think about it for a minute. Our bodies do talk to us. Doesn't that sound strange? I mean, you're probably thinking, what are you talking about? But here is a few examples of how our bodies do speak to us. How about when our skin looks pale? We look sick and we look weak. I see you there shaking your head, DC. <laughs> I'm kind of a pale guy. <laughs> well, also, not only when we look pale, but how about when our skin looks sallow and it has the appearance even of jaundice? I'm just saying all these examples because y you understand what I'm talking about through, I'm sure you've seen these situations in your life, maybe not you, but looking at other people. But if, it, if the skin is even jaundice, you know, you probably are thinking the liver, obviously, it, it isn't too happy and it's probably an overload. Or another example, when the cheeks are flushed, you know, parents say, oh, your child must have a fever. You know, how about when there's dark eye circles and puffy bloodshot eyes? We would say not enough sleep. But let's move on to other telltale signs that say something is going on wrong inside. So like visible wounds that won't heal. We can see it. We just need to pay more attention to ourselves. You know how they say if someone has diabetes that they need to be extra careful not to hurt their feet because the skin on your feet is harder to heal and sometimes the toes even turn black. I'm saying all these colors and all these different things so that you, you just will understand where I'm coming from with explaining our body and how it's trying to tell us what's going on. And, you know, many times you can actually see infection, you know, when you have a cut. Uh, and sometimes you can even smell the infection. But how about when we even bruise ourselves, we run into something or we get hit? You know, we get that black and blue and then it gradually turns yellow. And then, you know, the bruise is finally, it's finally going away. And some people say that they bruise easily. But why does it? From our observations, we know that because we even know, you've seen older people when their arms, they, it's scary because you sometimes feel they almost look beat up, but it is that our skin gets very thin with age. And then anytime we just bang against anything, even slightly, it bruises and you can see it. I'm saying all this because I just don't think we realize how much we really can tell from observing our own bodies. We don't realize, I don't feel, how much we can really help ourselves to stay healthy just by paying a little more attention to those signs and signals. And there I go with the detective stuff. You need to be your own investigator. And now when I ask the question, can skincare possibly save your life? You know what I mean. I, and you know why I say, yes, it most definitely can. Because how many situations did I just mention that you can actually see for yourself with your own eyes that, that there really is a problem going on? And even though they are problems at the time, 
they somehow magically heal time after time. You know what I mean, DC? It's like, I don't think we understand, or we don't take time because we're so sure of ourselves that our bodies will heal. Yeah. That we know you, what you cut yourself and in a week, it's not even there anymore. Right. It's yeah. just amazing. Yeah. I don't think we understand what wonderful computers and software we actually have. <laughs> of course. I think maybe this day and age people associate with the computer situation a lot more, but you know, we are just amazing people. You know, and if you understand how we magically heal, there are times though that that magical healing doesn't really happen. And that's when you know that it's time to go see your doctor. Or maybe it is time to change something you're doing that could be causing it. You know, if, uh, even if it's a rash, you try to say, well, you know, d did I have new clothes on, uh, something that you didn't wash, did you brush against something, were you near an animal? But all of these are indicators that we can see that we either have to stay away from them or, or do something to change it. And other hints that something isn't working correctly would be like uh, edema for example. And we all know, we've all probably had it at times when you, our feet swell, or you, you, you can't get your shoes on, or your rings, you can't get them off your fingers. And, and it probably does cross people's mind, you know, could that be your heart, or is it just that it's a really hot day? Did you eat too much salt, or are you overweight? But something is getting our attention and saying, something in our body, it, it's trying to say to us, do something for me. So, you know, now I want to move on, though, to some other different conditions that are indicators of issues that are going on our insides. You know, I'm not trying to say here about all sicknesses that could be. I'm just trying to say these are what this large organ, our, our skin from our head to our toes, what it is showing us inside and out through uh, even all of our senses. You know, we can go back to issues like acne, psoriasis, and rosacea. Yeah, my goodness, you even think about measles and chicken pox. Is there anyone who can't picture that? Uh, you know, they're quite obvious to the eye. You know, God didn't leave anything out. He gave us the warnings to help us see what is happening. And I say before the crap hits the fan. <laughs> so I don't know that that really goes together in the same little paragraph there. But, you know, many times with just minor adjustments, we can stop those future ailments right in their tracks. And that's through prevention. You know, we don't just wake up one morning and suddenly we're overweight. We could see it coming on. It didn't just happen. And, you know, like, surprise, I'm here. <laughs> you know, what more do we need to be convinced that we can do much more to help ourselves by just paying attention to our skin? I mean, this is exciting to me because most of what is happening, be it good or bad, is mainly from what we're eating and from our lifestyle. You know, I feel this is a major breakthrough. And it is for me anyway. And even though it's common sense and we hear it and we see it every day, I just think it's unbelievable that we can help prevent much of the unwanted sicknesses that we get. Because what's that say what that is saying is like, nip it in the bud, stop it before it gets a stronghold. And in many cases, we can do that. You know... We've heard for years simple sayings like, simple sayings like, uh, what is, what's eating you? You're grouchy and you're tired. And I know the people have asked me that because they'll say, when and what did you eat last? Because I, I get that way. I, I can only go so long without food and sleep. So there must be some truth to saying, to that saying that you are what you eat. Even for an example would be, if, if you drink too much coffee, what happens? You, know, you get the shakes. And how about that acid stomach? Or what about the foods that blow your stomach way out when you have to unbuckle your belt? Because once again, the skin is stretching out with a gas that builds up. I mean, isn't that kind of strange when you think about that? Our amazing skin, it goes in and it goes out even, even through the meals that you eat in a day. And actually, I even have to say, 
How about a pregnant woman, how her skin stretches? It's amazing. Uh, uh, yeah. Amazing how that works. <laughs> yes. And then you see, this is just a little side note, because of course I am in the skincare profession. Mm -hmm. And I know that women, some women get stretch marks and some do not. But even in my skin uh, work that I do, I have worked on stomachs where you can use microdermabrasion glycolic peels. It's not that it takes it all away, but I want women to know there is some hope for those stretch marks. So throughout the show, when I'm talking about skin, I, at times I will be talking about my profession because anyone could call me at 570-575-8185 or go you know, to the MadariClinicals.com. You can go to the site and you can always ask me questions and I'm more than eager to help anyone uh, understand any of the processes that possibly could help. You know, it's just so amazing how our skin is always working for us. So what I'm suggesting is that your very own body is telling you your very own health secrets. Did you ever think of it that way before, DC? That Have you looked at yourself in that way? I, I've learned a lot about my body. Um, I recently, I, I lost a, about 100 pounds between uh, the fall of 2012 what? yeah, and, and 2013. How did you do that? I, it was, it was, part of it was in my mind. It was yes. just, I had to keep telling myself, okay, you need to change. I, you know, I had doctor, I, my doctor telling me, well, you know, you have this, you might have this. You're probably going to get this in a few years if you if you don't you know drop a few pounds. And I finally took it to heart, and uh, and I said, all right, well, I guess I do have to change something. So I changed all my eating habits. Um, I really had to start denying myself stuff, you know, like yes. where I would just I would just go right for the snack foods. Right I am shocked. The, right I'm the, sitting here. You're amazing. Thank you. The uh, the prepackaged. I just I had to stop. And even just in the last few months, I've started trying to do more fruits and vegetables and just like if it grows out of the ground, it's probably OK for me, <laughs> as opposed to it grows out of the ground, goes through machines and processes and gets dried out and sliced up and then chemicals added to it. And it's put in packaging for uh, what do they call it uh, sh to be shelf stable. Right. Uh, I just kind of started getting away from that stuff and. And my body was like, yeah, go, keep on going. <laughs> well, I can tell anyone listening right now that if he lost 100 pounds, mm -hmm. he must have done it right because your skin is beautiful. Thank you. I mean, it, and for a man to say your skin is beautiful, but there's no sagging. I mean, if you lost 100 pounds, you would think if you didn't do it right, maybe mm -hmm. it would be sagging and then you don't know what to do with the extra skin. But right. I mean, your arms, I would have never, ever guessed that that was okay. ever an issue for you. Sure. So through that, though, your health, mm -hmm. all of these, what, what does the doctor say when he sees you now after? He, he's, he's just impressed. He's amazed. He's like, wow. He, he just, wow, is his, uh, his, his, um, his words. And uh, the, his, even like one of his nurses or office assistants, they, you know, they'll weigh, they weigh me when I come in. And she looked at the chart. She's like, Wow. And then, and then I heard going down the hall, she's like, we have a success story. Like, wow, okay, I'm a success story now. Well, I'm so glad you're on my show today because this is a complete surprise to me. Happy to be here. And I'm very happy that you're here because that's what our whole show is about. Yeah. Well, DC, now that I'm finding out this wonderful success story from you, I want to hear more and I want our listeners to hear more. What? else is happening to you not only that you lost the weight but your whole life you must be full of energy what else has happened i i really i really want to run a marathon I, I, really um wow. i mean i got so much more energy as i lost the weight and it's a mental thing too because you look at yourself in the mirror and go wow look what i've done i can i can keep going and I mean, every day I still struggle with, you know, I mean, I get a little bit of stress in my brain or something. I'm like, well, I want to I want to get some snacks and take care of this. And then I have to be like, no, stop it. <laughs> well, your snacks are different now. And did you find because I changed my diet and my mm -hmm. life, too. But I find if I try to cheat and I go back to those snacks, mm -hmm. it's a good thing to do, because then you find out how terrible they taste. You no long I no longer have that taste for it. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. I still... <laughs> you still do. <laughs> I, I still do. And again, 
I, I, I mean, I know it sounds kind of destructive, but it's like every day it's it's there's You're a human. lot of denial that has to happen, like where I have to keep telling myself, no, don't do that. No, no. <laughs> Go towards the refrigerator. No, get away from there. <laughs> don't buy it in the first place and put it in your refrigerator. But right. but if you do mm-hmm. have to cheat, mm-hmm. you probably don't eat as much cheating. Not- you probably still control yourself oh, sure. with just a few bites or and then say that's it. Pretty no. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So then you actually did become your own detective of your own body, listening to your needs. Yes. Well, yes. And, and, do you, and you still do that every day. I mean, mm-hmm. you have to. Yeah. It's constant, constant every day coaching myself, getting support from, you know, my family, from my girlfriend. I can tell you what I see. And what I've already said about your skin and everything, but I have to add one more thing to it. Mm-hmm. Your color looks so healthy in the glow that we're going to talk about later in the show you have that really yeah okay all right it's, i'll take it well <laughs> Thank good you. you deserve it <laughs> all right well it's time to take a quick break and uh, when we come back we'll be talking about our body signals of course if you have any questions check out medeariclinicals.com or feel free to give terry a call at 866-646-3374 this is make a change with terry martin on 94.3 fm the talker we'll be right back confidence it's something we all search for it's something we all strive for When we're confident, we feel we can accomplish anything. And think about it. When you knew you looked good, you walked with your head held a little higher. Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Get that confidence you need with Madari Clinicals. They are a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. From anti-aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Medary Clinicals gives you that confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Medary Clinicals. Check out MedaryClinicals.com. That's M-E-D-E-R-I Clinicals.com or call 866-646-3374. Take on the world with Medary Clinicals. When we talk about our body signals, what I'm suggesting is that you really need to pay attention to your own body. And you do know what your body is telling you. You do know your very own health secrets because even when you go to the doctors, what does he say? He says, okay, tell me what your symptoms are. Obviously, you know what your symptoms are because he, it, he isn't magically looking into the insides of our bodies. He has to go by what we're telling him. So you, you do know, and if you just possibly paid attention maybe a couple days or weeks before when you saw some of those symptoms, I'm saying maybe you could avoid what you're, you know, going to the doctors or whatever sickness really befalls you. And when I say befalls you, I'm saying that how many times do we think that we're helpless in a, when we're in a sickness or in, you know, we have a sick situation going on in our body? And so we turn the complete care of ourselves over to our, the health professional or, you know, to the doctor. And why do we do that? Because we feel safe that now we're in his care with his knowledge. And we thought he should or he would, or he could fix everything. And only to find out he couldn't, because whatever made the sickness happen was still going on. Maybe it was food, maybe it was drugs or alcohol, stress. It's hard to tell what it is. But then so many times I've heard it, so many times where uh, we blame the doctor because we say whatever it was he did, he didn't heal us. When the healing we expected didn't return, so many times... We say that it's his fault. Well, it totally isn't all his fault because we're giving our power away to others sometimes instead of taking responsibility for ourselves like you did, DC. You took responsibility. You, yeah, yeah you, go ahead. Did you have more to say about that? Yeah, just, I, I just, I think I just had an awakening one day. I was like, 
this this is my body. I have to live with this. I'm I'm you know I'm going to be forty soon. I have to live with this for you know hopefully God willing the next you know forty fifty maybe sixty years. You know? So when you say you have to live with this, did you mean your magnificent body or with the weight? So and that's where that day you. Was it just like one day you finally said that's it, or you just started to change your cupboards gradually? It was it was almost like it, an overnight thing. It's like it, it just hit you. I woke up one morning and said this this has got to change. All the weight I was carrying around, I wasn't getting quality sleep. I was I, I had I don't know acid indigestion almost constantly. I'm like there, there's got to be there's something wrong. Your body here. was crying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I feel that we just opt out so many times and say we can't do anything about it because we think it's easier. But boy, in the long run, it never is. And as that saying goes, as a man thinketh, that is exactly what happens. When you said it was your mind, it was. We had another person on our show at one point, and this had to do with weight, and he had lost 120 pounds. But what sticks in my mind, what he said is, if you just want to go out on the beach, if you and, and have a bathing suit, bikini, look great in that, or a six pack, you know, for a man, and just to have a perfect body, he said that is not enough reason in this world to go on and live and stick with a diet. He said it has to be basically. I, I talk about it in the end a little bit. It has to be a soul goal. You have to want to live. There has to be a bigger reason than looks because that isn't enough. But, you know, the medical profession, they can't do it alone. If a person is sick and they continue to drink soda and process food, everything of which is processed is dead food. I mean, our bodies cannot regain life from eating dead garbage. And that is what processed food is. You know, you know I, I see people with all their animals and how much they love them. If your pet dog was sick, would you pour him a soda and add a piece of pizza to that for supper? Or, you know, how about a coffee, bacon, fried eggs, and hash browns for breakfast? Uh, and even wait, how about a hot dog and french fries for lunch? No, you wouldn't think of it. But you wouldn't feed that to your animals. And yet, how many people are willfully feeding themselves that so if they're not sick yet they will be our bodies are so beautiful they're masterpieces and we need to stop this obese and sick epidemic that is happening to our families you know you just look at the little children it's not just the parents it's not just the grandparents anymore it's it's very sad you look at me like you have a comment right now (laughs) no okay i'll let you off the hook on that well, my book, Makeup uh, Beyond Makeup, was written to help people find a way to stop this insane roller coaster ride that we've been going on. Because if you look back at even old photos, from as far back as 50 years, the amount of obesity was unheard of, and now it's epidemic. And I say, why? And I believe it's mainly food choices. And what else can it be? Is it something in the air? No, no. It is the processed dead food. Our bodies are crying out for real food, and it's hard to find these days. You can't even trust food labels anymore because with the many new laws, there's so many ingredients that they don't even have to be spelled out on the label. They can say something like flavorings, but they don't have to say what is in the flavorings. And our food labeling is so deceiving anymore. It looks and sounds good by the fast-talking words on the commercials and the pictures. But if you look up the ingredients that are on the label, you need a dictionary to understand them. And we probably wouldn't even or couldn't even understand them with a dictionary. But my rule is, what you said a little bit earlier, something the same, if it isn't understandable when reading the ingredient label, leave it right there on the shelf where you said, go to the ground, almost everything. I mean, you do have to watch out for some poisonous little plants here and there (laughs) but that's not what you're referring to you're saying how fresh you know if you could even have a garden or buy the garden food that are all along the roadsides now you know this is a good time for anyone starting well when this airs this is in the summer where the uh, all the vegetables and fruits are they're in abundance and they're priced right and if you don't have time to have your own garden 
it's everywhere along the roadsides and you can start to do the juicing or get on a better program and especially you know and you should try to get organic if it's possible because our food has been so messed with we just don't we don't even realize how bad it is but we just trusted the authorities to watch out for us and like the doctors they just cannot do it all and once again we need to be a detective about what is in our foods our society is suffering and all we have to do is you know look at all the parking lots that are marked for handicapped it used to be one or two spots but now it's one or two rows and that alone should tell you okay why is this happening? Our country's citizens are being fed low-quality food. That it's worse than bad. And however, we are paying a fortune for the food. I mean, it isn't cheap. Cost doesn't seem to matter. It's the quality that it just isn't there. And many people that are obese, they're not purposely eating tons of food to purposely be gaining like our society is gaining. You know, no, we are a sick society from trusting lawmakers who are passing these food laws, mainly for a financial gain somewhere in the food manufacturing chain. And it's a crying shame that the food the farmers are feeding the cattle to fatten them up, way beyond imaginable. You could look that up on, uh, th- there's a lot of shows out there to see what's really happening with these poor animals, the way that they're being mass, mass produced and fed. But you know what's happening. That's what's happening to us. Now we're eating those animals that some of them only have 18 months to live to just stand there and keep eating and eating and eating. So the hormones and everything that they have, that is exactly what's happening. And our people, our society, they don't, they don't even know what's going on because it isn't truly their fault. It, it's, it's the... We're just not being protected. And because we think, well, it's in the store. If it wouldn't be in the store, if it's not safe to eat, and that's just absolutely not true. When I say that's not true, it's because I believe the obese are saying, now they're actually waking up to say, what is wrong? What's happening? I am not eating that much to cause this weight. And they try every kind of diet, everything that they can. And it doesn't matter anymore what they eat because whatever is being sold, if it's not carefully checked out, like I said earlier about the ingredients and what's on the label of every food purchase you make, that that is going to keep you in that bondage. And if you want freedom from this weight bondage, you really are going to have to do the steps like you did, DC. You had to bit by bit change. And I like what you said, too, about changing because you're changing every day. You seem to be into it more than the day that you started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because it's, it's about seeing results. I see results every day. I look in the mirror. I feel it. And I go, well, geez, if, if I can do this today, maybe I'll do it again tomorrow. Did you step on the scale like every day or close to it and watch your weight go? Or when did you finally, when you first started, how did... It was, Help us. You know, I made sure not to step on a scale every day because that would have stressed me out because, you know, our weight, our weight, body weight changes daily. It could go up two or three pounds and then go down two or three pounds. So I checked maybe once a week, once every other week. And that's where I started to see the, the decrease. Did you write it down or just in your mind? No, I kept track of it. I kept track of it on my, my phone, a little notepad. And uh, and just week after week or month after month, it kept going down like, all right, well, I guess I'm doing something right. And I keep track of everything I eat. There's a little app in there on the phone called My Fitness Pal. And uh, I just keep track of everything. It, it tracks, you know, it tracks the, the intake of everything, like the carbs and the protein and the fat. Wow. And uh, and I just keep looking back at those and going, OK, what did I do? What was I eating last week that I apparently, you know, this apparently is working. So so. You ended up, what, eating a lot of fruits and vegetables? Just give us an idea, because we need help out here, and I, I started, you did something right. I started by discontinuing going to the fast food restaurants. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I started uh, just making everything at home, 
Um, even if it was first, I mean, I was still doing prepackaged foods and frozen dinners and things like that. A lot of it was just cutting calories, realizing I didn't need all the calories I was taking in throughout the day. Uh, it was amazing when I really thought about how much I used to eat in, in calorie, how many calories. So that was about cutting the calories. And then just within the last, you know, three or four months, I had this this epiphany or I, somebody told me, you know, you really need to eat more natural fruits and vegetables, just stuff with less ingredients. Like you were just talking about the la- the food labeling, you know, with with words we we have, we don't use in everyday language. Um, and I just started to try to go more natural. And even just since then, I started feeling so much better. So always looking for the next thing. Do you drink a lot of water? So, yeah, water. Um, I, f- I try to follow the don't drink your calories. Uh, the, there's a rule out there people follow don't drink your calories so I just I go with water mostly well one other thing that I see when I'm out at restaurants you, you can't help but now pay attention to what everybody else is ordering right sure <laughs> and I see people try and they'll get a salad and then they will get a diet soda and mm-hmm. that's the killer right there yeah. because they're trying so hard and they think that that diet is doing something for them but if they were to research all, all of these artificial sweeteners, they're deadly. Mm-hmm. And the body does not know what to do with them. So basically, it's putting the, the fat on a shelf. Yeah. And they, they know for a fact there's studies out there that it doesn't help. But it's very upsetting to see people keep drinking it because you know they're trying. Mm-hmm. They are trying. Mm-hmm. But that's not going to work. Right. And all of these... Uh, again, the labeling where it says light, L-I-T-E on it. Mm-hmm. Or what I really love is... Mother, don't get mad at me for this. But she came home one day and she said, you know what? I just got a pumpkin pie and there's no sugar in it. She really did not understand Uh that God bless her. Mm -hmm. It was, it's all of those artificial ingredients. Mm -hmm. And, you know, here she's trying hard and she was proud that that was it. And people just don't understand because they're fooled. They're just unbelievably fooled. Mm -hmm. And therefore... That is why I'm asking people also to read my book that I just wrote. And it's it's basically a brochure, and it's a guide with a simple, easy-to-follow plan. Now, men, you're not going to like the first half if you should purchase it, but let your wife have that part of it or your girlfriend. Or maybe, actually, if a man read what a woman goes through to look good. <laughs> good point. This is only a little booklet. But in the end of the book... It has the basics, and if we have time before the end of this show, I'll go over that a little bit. But it's just an easy-to-follow plan because people don't know where to begin. And you don't have to spend a fortune, is what I'm saying, to get yourself back in shape. When I say, again, that you don't have to spend a fortune to get yourself back in shape, the world is full of gimmicks that are out there, and they take something and and I do want to say I'm not just trying to talk about obesity but from what I understand at least 60% of our society is obese now and there is no reason for it we don't understand it but I am feeling that I'm starting to understand it because of the what am I trying to say here the the gimmicks the all of the ways that they try to get you to spend money and they're using our weight as a tool to to do that and no all i'm saying is well, stop ho- listening to that well, hold hold <laughs> okay. that thought let's take a quick break Good. here okay all right when we come back because i'm getting talk, wound up we'll talk more about that of course if you have any questions check out medeariclinicals.com or feel free to give terry a call 866-646-3374 this is make a change with terry martin on 94.3 fm the talker we'll be right back Confidence. It's something we all search for. It's something we all strive for. When we're confident, we feel we can accomplish anything. I mean, think about it. When you knew you looked good, you walked with your head held a little higher. Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Get that confidence you need with Madari Clinicals. They are a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. 
from anti-aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Medary Clinicals gives you that confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Medary Clinicals. Check out MedaryClinicals.com. That's M-E-D-E-R-I Clinicals.com or call 866-646-3374. Take on the world with Medary Clinicals. DC, what I'm talking about here is I'm trying to say that you set the stage. All of us. We set our own stage. We have control of our life. Yes. And all we have to do are make or to just make a few simple changes so that you can get back to the real you, just like you did. Mm -hmm. That wasn't you with that 100 pounds extra on there. No. And the way I feel is you were a food prisoner. We just became a prisoner within our own bodies. And with real honest food consumption of good food, you actually will save money. I don't know if you found that out, but when I changed, I did. Because people don't realize that fast food is way more costly than it would be to go home with a couple bags of produce and actually maybe real meat and cheese. Mm -hmm. And the food is so delicious that you do prepare. And I think that has a lot to do with it, too. When you know you're going away, plan. If you have to pack something the night before or before you go, have it in your car or in your office. Have it somewhere because when you're starving, that's when you go and you grab anything and then you'll think you'll just start all over again. But what I'm saying here is even if weight isn't the only issue, what if it's a health issue? There's a strong chance that you will see many improvements just by making these changes as well. I did. I saw many changes in myself from just making the change in my life from, well, actually, when you make it with food, you start making it with every other choice. Mm -hmm. Your whole life just turns around because when you feel better, you do want to go out and try to play tennis. You do want to run like you said. And you know what's really cool? When I started feeling better because I had been very sick, I, I remember going for a walk on this golf course and I actually like a child I wanted to jump really high up in the air and I did I mean if anyone saw me I probably look goofy goof you know so goofy but it felt good to be able to do that again yeah. simple wonderful things that we did as a child so once you start eating the higher quality nutritious food the amount you eat will also go down so when we're saying about cutting down financially you don't have to have three bags compared to the one bag of food that you might eat because all of the vitamins and the minerals that your body's craving is in those foods and and as we said earlier you won't want to eat that junk anymore not just because of your mind, but you'll taste it. And I can taste the artificial ingredients. It, it just is like, yuck, what did I see in this greasy donut or this piece of cake? Mm. And I feel that losing weight is simple. And I know people might not think that's so, but if they just pick up that nutrient-rich food, our bodies will stop that craving. Because I feel that's why people overeat. Our bodies are starved and they keep sending the signal out, I'm hungry, because they're deficient. And our body is so smart. It keeps wanting us to eat until our needs are met. And I think that's what's happening these days. Our needs are never met. They're never fulfilled because that food has nothing nutritious to offer. You know, there's so many things we can change to, like with pure water. And we talked a little bit earlier about the sweetened juices and what they're sweetened with. But one of the biggest culprits is um, corn syrup. And if you check your soda, which soda is a no-no anyway, but if you could switch anything that you needed to have sweetening into like either honey or maple syrup, especially maple syrup, that's what I use even in my coffee. And it's really goofy because I take this little bottle and and probably not too many people see it. I don't care if they do. It's my health. (laughs) Uh, I I put it in, well, there's a restaurant you go to locally. Um, I don't know if I should even say the names, but anyway, you get a little jar of maple syrup. So I just kept my maple syrup and I just keep refilling it and I keep it in my purse so that when I go, I have it with me because what they say is your blood sugar levels, they don't spike with maple syrup. And, and so you can put that in anything. If I'm making salad dressings at home, even if I bake cookies, that is what I use. I just get it by the gallon. And, and yes, it's expensive to start with, but you, in the long run, I haven't had a bag of white sugar in my house in 30 years, at least. So you can do without it. I know people just say, if you take everything out of my cupboards, you know, and you take away all of these things, I don't know how to cook. But let's get back to that corn syrup culprit. That is one of the hardest things on our bodies 
And if you look even in ketchup, you can look in almost any processed food, and it is there. But they're getting pretty sneaky about the labeling now. There are other forms that they, you know, other derivatives and they of corn syrup. So you think, oh, good, I'm reading it, and corn syrup isn't there. Get reading those labels because... If it isn't there, it's some new thing that they came up with. It's worse. You're smiling. And it's I know you have something to do. <laughs> right. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I just feel by making these few changes alone, you can and you will experience the life you should have had and you should still have in your future. Just by making a change, you do not have to live the painful life so many people are living. I mean, I get so sad when I see so many people in all the power wheelchairs and everything. I just so much want to stop and say, you know what? It's only food and it's not their fault, but you just make the different choices. And I say, you know, you you don't have to live in that jail cell, meaning our bodies, that you didn't mean to create this jail cell for yourself. But that is what happened. And you can break out of it and you can enjoy your life again. I think so many people think that they're done. No, they're not done for. And you are a living example here right now. And I'm just so excited because I know that this obesity in our nation, it's no coincidence. It's not territorial. It's all over. So what is all over in the United States? I don't know about other countries and how they're doing, but what is one common factor we all have? We're probably all getting a lot of our products from the very same manufacturers. And that's the junk that's in it. And that's what I say. It is what is on the fork that you're putting in your mouth. And the answer is in the fork. And the reason that I say that is I'm not horribly, or I wasn't horribly overweight, but I was. I had five children. And um, I can say that I was squeezing into a size 12. I really needed a 14. And now I am beside in a size like two to four. And the reason I'm saying that is Um, I do work, but I'm lazy when it comes to working out. And they say 80 to 90% is the food that you're eating. And I know it's what went on my fork because the only other thing that I do, and it's also in the book, is rebounding. In the last, uh, since I've had this radio show and I talked to Mario who lost 120 pounds, I did start a program that was that P90X that he did. And I could see, I can definitely see the difference from not just the food, but it doesn't really take that much exercise to make a very big change too. Because I've been afraid of exercising because I was so lazy and I thought, well, you know, maybe that would be too hard on me. You know, you get worried about silly things like the important organ, like your heart, (laughs) you know? So I thought better, I'll just walk a little bit. I'll just do little things. And I surprised myself when these half hour programs were finally over and it's like, shocked did it really happen and I did it so it doesn't matter how old we are to get started don't let don't let life just beat us up through something as ridiculous as food when there's it's exciting to change it you know I I can say that I understand weight problems and I also understand serious health problems because when I say several years ago I did have a serious health problem and I didn't think I was eating so bad to cause the kind of issues that I had thrown at me. But you know what? I can say thrown at me. But as I looked back and I heard some doctor's words, I saw it coming on. I just thought they were little nuisances. I didn't think they were anything that would lead up to anything serious, but they do. So listen to those little teeny nud nudges that you get. Because as I said, I thought I was eating pretty well. But if you think you're eating pretty well, you can still eat better, guaranteed. You know, I just, like I said, I trusted everything in the stores. And, and I thinking I was always thinking that it wouldn't be there if it wasn't healthy. And that is so wrong. There were many changes that I had to make and many more all along the way I have made. And like DC said, many more I will have to make, but we're so excited and willing to make them because this is an ongoing process. It's forever because we must take what we eat seriously. It is our fuel, just as much as the gas in the car. That food is our fuel and we need the highest, what, what do you call it, octane? High, high octane, yep. <laughs> That's yep. what we need. You know, now that we've talked of the many reasons that cause our skin to show us that we might be having health issues and now that we know that we're going to take responsibility and the steps to help ourselves, we can move on to helping what will help our appearance now. Because 
when we're shedding all of those poisons and all of those toxins, you know, our bodies are starting to look better, but let's go to our face and, and our skin because it's good to get rid of that dull, lifeless look and get our youthful glow back. And my profession is skincare, and I do consulting in my office at 415 South State Street in Clark Summit. And my number is 570-575-8185. I can help you. I can help anyone figure out a plan of action to make a change. We will come up with a plan that you're comfortable with. And maybe it is microdermabrasion or glycolic peels or choosing products that are correct for you to be using. So you don't have to guess anymore. There, I would look at your skin through a machine so there's no guessing what is best for you. If, it, if this is a woman that is listening and you might want to come in to see what a paramedical makeover is. And what that really means is going right down to your bone structure of how to apply your makeup. And the reason that I am a specialist at that is because of working on accident and burn survivors. Because sometimes part of their face may not be there and you have to reconstruct it. So therefore, you really need to know the shape of the face, where the bones are, and if the cl- if the eyes are close together or too far apart. Uh, uh, it's just amazing what, what you really would need to do to take care of a real prob- problematic issue. Now, women who haven't been through any of this, you'd say, well, why do I need that? Because for once, you can find out what is uniquely just just for you, no one else, because God didn't make any two faces alike. And so we can find out exactly what is best for you. Now, if we were going to go from that into the microdermabrasion and talking about the safety of it, I feel it's a gentle way to remove the dead layers of skin. And this has been done for many years. And to my knowledge, there's no side effects. I mean, I think when I say many, it's at least 30 or 40 years this has been done. So if if there was ever going to be a problem with that, then uh, I think we would have known by now. But for now, I see DC is telling me time to take a break. Well, let's take a break. And uh, when we come back, more on microdermabrasion and something something men can do too. Absolutely. They should be doing it. All right. We'll hear more about that. Of course, if you have any questions, check out MedeeriClinicals.com or feel free to give Terry a call. 866-646-3374. This is Make a Change with Terry Martin on 94.3 FM, The Talker. We'll be right back. Confidence. It's something we all search for. It's something we all strive for. When we're confident, we feel we can accomplish anything. I mean, think about it. When you knew you looked good, you walked with your head held a little higher. Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Get that confidence you need with Madari Clinicals. They are a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. From anti-aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Madari Clinicals gives you that confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Madari Clinicals. Check out MedariClinicals.com. That's M-E-D-E-R-I Clinicals.com. Or call 866-646-3374. Take on the world with Medary Clinicals. And your question before we took the break was, is microdermabrasion something that men should do too? And I said, absolutely, because it is a process for both men and women because skin is skin and gender doesn't matter. We are talking about the health of skin, damage from anything, from the environment, from the sun, and just aging. It happens to both of us as well. So skin care is not a feminine thing. It's not only for women to go for skin care. Men are out working in the sun and they're on the golf course. They're baking in the sun. And it would be advisable to get the damaged layers of skin off, mainly around the tips of the ears, because I have seen in the past in my when I worked in a medical setting, many men came in with skin cancer on the tip of their ears. Now, this doesn't mean that you would never get skin cancer. But what I 
knew from years ago there was a show 2020 and I, I wish that I could go back and find the article about it but they were saying microdermabrasion is a very good preventative measure to help stop any growths that well put it this way microdermabrasion should be done in a series of at least six times so it's it's that's why it's sold on a package it's not just to get you back every time but it's gentle as it, it, it they say it's kind of like a a cat licking your face but it, it's a little bit more than that but it, it doesn't hurt but many people just go to sleep while they're even having it done because it's then you get all the other skincare treatments because it's mainly it ends up being a little bit like a facial because at least I'm that way when I work on someone because we're taking the dead skin off and then we're treating your nice new baby skin that's coming out and your nice new healthy skin. So this week we're taking off that layer. You go home for a week and you're healing. Not even that anyone can tell because even movie stars, they called it the lunchtime peel. It's, it's not like it's so abrasive. But then you, you're you usually pretty excited to come back and you want all six times done because about the third time that you're done, this beautiful glow starts coming. And I, I want to say, you can actually see aging stop. It goes on hold. Some of it starts to disappear. Some of those lines that I love one way I used to say this, and it's, it's kind of harsh, I guess, but if you've ever dusted a, an end table and say it was a square one and it has a, a little corner like the crevice the cracks that that are down on the side if anyone could see me right now I'm here with my hands trying to show you <laughs> what the table's like but anyway you know when you're dusting all the dust settles down in there well you don't really get it out unless you take a little toothpick or something and you're down there but that's kind of what microdermabrasion does I take lines and I'll take my fingers and kind of pull the lines apart and, and just get in there and then clean all that out. So how could you not look younger when all that dust is out of the table? You know what I'm saying? When the, when the dust and all the dirt, even though we wash our face, it's not like that. It settles down in there. But on top of that, the skin just, it's, it's dead. You know, those top layers are dead. So it's so nice each week when you get that layer off and you come back and the next layer is coming off. So if people doubt me or they, you know, wouldn't even know what to think about it, take a picture first. And then six weeks later, take another picture. And you can see because it's like our bodies. You probably saw this too. As you continually get better, you don't see it. And you see it maybe looking in a photo later. But day by day, when you continue to get better and when you're doing skincare, and the way that we feel about ourselves we don't have to feel that this is like a macho thing if a man is coming or a woman that it's a vain thing you know what it's an investment to me in your health and i think if we started looking at it different that you can go buy all the beautiful suits and all the beautiful clothes but you can't cover your face and the face is really the only part of your body that is constantly exposed to the sun to the winter the snow the rain the heat, the heater in the car coming up in your face. And wouldn't you just think that for sure you'd have to look better if you got that dead skin off. But there's other ways that I take it off too. And there's one called a glycolic peel. And my company actually makes it. My company is Madari Clinicals. It's a 20-year-old company. And it's not like I buy it from anyone else. I actually have it manufactured for Madari Clinicals, and all of our products are what I have invented myself. And we are sold online all over the United States. We're sold in many spas and doctor's offices, or you can simply go online. Now, if it is that it is going to be a very heavy-duty glycolic peel, the very str strongest one that you can get. You can't buy that online. You do have to go to a doctor's office to get that done. And you would not believe what a glycolic peel does. It is so cool. And the best way I can tell you this is, and it does sound a little scary, but it isn't. It kind of melts the skin down a little bit. If, and it doesn't hurt. It's because I use one that is called Buffered. And buffered only stays on for about six minutes. And when you first put it on, you might feel a little itching. You might feel a little tingling. And then in a few minutes, you, you feel nothing until I go to take it off. And you'll get that little feeling again. But if you go to someone who uses a product that is not buffered, in my opinion, it is horrible. It might be a cheaper product to use. But you're sitting there in the chair and the, the esthetician or the doctor might say to you, 
uh, okay, tell me when you can't stand it anymore because it feels like worms. It feels like it's eating your face and it absolutely does burn and hurt. And the problem with that is what if someone's pain tolerance, their threshold is a lot different than someone else and they keep saying, do this. Now, I have done that in the past and when I look at, I looked at someone one time and I could see her skin, it actually got ashy. I mean, it was, it was burning. And it was scary, so I said to myself, I will never sell that product, and I will never use that product. So, when a person gets a glycolic peel, you look so beautiful when you leave my office, or so handsome, because you, I say if you're going to a family reunion, or a class reunion, you're going someplace special, come and get that, because that gorgeous glow, and people will look at you when you're getting these treatments, and I always tell a lot of people, Tell people you're getting it if you want to, but if you don't tell them, I just love to see the reaction and say, did you get a new haircut? Is that a new shirt? What is different about you? I can't tell what it is, but you know, you really are looking good and it is true. How could you not look good when you get that dead skin off? And then when we talk about our products, our products are made for your situation in particular. And when I say that, it's that we have clinical, which is for very sensitive skin. So say someone says they have rosacea or they have uh, thin skin, they're older, they can't take a lot of the strong products that are out there. Then we have a clinical line. And I do have to go into the skincare a little bit because we have also glycolic products that you take home. So after your treatments that you're getting from me, you don't want to quit. You don't want to lose where you finally got yourself to. You're back there. And so you use just the good gentle, the the washes, whatever you need to go along with it. But I also have to say, we have fantastic products for anti-aging. So say I'm working on someone and they're, they're getting uh, micro and glycolic peels. And they say, oh, but this line in particular, it's extra deep. Can't you get that? No, you know, you need a doctor in plastic surgery for certain things. However, we do have a product called Relax. And you only put that product in that line. And a one bottle will last three to six months. It's amazing. And you only put it in that line, kind of like that crack in the table I was saying. It'll lift that out up to... 50 to 68 percent so if you if the line no matter how deep it is it's going to help but if it's only fine line like crow's feet and you know around the mouth where botox can't be used in a lot of places because you have to be careful because they know uh, botox can paralyze you know that you have to watch it near the throat so we have so many fun products to help you look good because as i said earlier not just for the vein part of it but when you look good you feel good and you perform better. You perform better at your job and, and better in anything because even in a dating situation or any relationships, because you feel better, because, uh, because you look better. Like I say, you feel better and you, you gain confidence. And in this world, when we're talking about how hard it is out there and financially, this is a very good way instead of going through surgeries, see what you can do first. And then if that isn't enough for people who are contemplating surgeries, try this first. Because many times aging gracefully is really the best way to go. If, if you really feel that the need is to get something fixed surgically, fine. But maybe we beat ourselves up way too much. And if we just get to healthy, what's better looking than healthy? I mean, if you get your face all plastic surgeryed up and then the rest of the body doesn't match, it, that's just it. It doesn't match. Plus, when you're watching your face and you're watching your indicators, yeah, oh, your skin looks really dry. How much water did you drink recently? So, you know, it all just goes together. My answer is everything in your life would benefit if you would just make a change. And when you make one You'll make more, and that's why I say, yes, you possibly can live longer and stronger by taking care of your skin and watching it, what goes on to it. Be that detective. By in every way that you can, listen to your body's cries. Take a long look in the mirror and start being that detective. Be your own detective. You don't have to pay someone else to take care of you in this process. You only need to take that time out for yourself 
a little more often. And what I said earlier, what is your soul goal? If it's to live long and if it's to live strong, then you have to take it serious, just like DC did. And reap those rewards for the rest of your life. Just take some time to figure it out and have a wonderful week. And that's it for this week for Make a Change. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions for Terry Martin, feel free to give her a call, 866-646-3374, or check out Medeiri Clinicals, M-E-D-E-R-I, MedeiriClinicals.com for more information. Talk to you again next time on 94.3 FM The Talker. Have a great weekend, and thanks for listening.